Well, we have an absolutely outrageous, outlandish, and informative episode for you here today. And we are going to conclude this episode with trivia about me that you do not need to know. (laughs) And I'm sure you will enjoy it. Make sure you like, subscribe, and enjoy. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, Welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast for Tuesday, March 14th. Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway. We welcome you into the show. Welcome. welcome. Oh, we both had the same joke. Mine was, wasn't a joke. No, Mine was honest. And, I would never welcome people to this show. Mine was purely a joke. <laughs> You're not welcome to listen to this. Uh, yeah, we're back. Welcome in. Uh, the Deucers are here as well. Fun episode of the show today. Uh, I'll be honest, I'm a little in the dark because the producers have put together a couple of fantasy football games for us to play today. And uh, it should be fun. This episode is being pre-recorded. So uh, we know, we know. There's a lot of free agency news and information and you are salivating to hear what the fantasy footballers have to say about uh, all of the rumors. Remember that big rumor that oh, just was, happened? I couldn't believe. So I when when it came out, yeah. I was like, what? what are- <laughs> That's so, how I was. Yeah, no, I remember. I remember. But um, 100% of our free agent breakdown, the free agent frenzy, that's all coming on Thursday's show. We're recording this episode a little bit earlier. Uh, we, we've got some vacations planned with the family. Yes, we do try to see our families at some point during the 24-7, 365 NFL news cycle. It's just spring break. That's the yeah. one time of the year where we actually try to see our children. And the league's like, oh, let's start the new league year during spring break. It was yeah. very unfortunate. I'm like, have you grown a whole foot? I know. Because <laughs> last, the last year when I saw you, you were right. much shorter. Yeah, every spring break we see our children. <laughs> um, but just so you all know, we're covering the free agency, all the madness, Thursday as long as it takes, we're talking free agency. Yeah, we don't want a Frank Gore situation, you know, where <laughs> where Tuesday we're talking about Frank Gore on the Eagles Yeah, because the tampering period is like, oh, he's going to sign there, and then no, he's not. You remember that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Then he was a Colt. I remember Josh McDaniels was yeah. the head coach of the, uh, he was the, Colts the Colts as well. And then he was not. <laughs> So uh, that will be on Thursday. Today we're gonna we're gonna talk about a number of things in the fantasy football realm. Uh, play a game of Who Am I? Producers made up uh, some new adventure for us. A brand new game. And we'll do some liar liar as well. Lots to talk about. One other headline. Jason made sure I I brought it up on today's show. But you've asked for hats for a long time. Fantasy footballers caps, some snapbacks, hats. We got them. Do we? Yeah. Oh, sweet. They're available. Shopballers.com. And uh, I'm on my way. Yeah, you can head over there. <laughs> check them out. You, yes. Jason, please get yours through the website. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no discount. Um, Put it in, and then I will hand it to you. <laughs> and the Ultimate Draft Kit's available at ultimatedraftkit.com. Get in there right now. Check it out. Learn more about the Draft Kit. Best way to dominate your fantasy football drafts. All right. Quick question today. What are we doing, Brooksy? All right, we're going to play a game of Who Am I? It's been a little while. Brooks. Yep, I was going to – I was uh, nailed mm-hmm. it. I mean, mm-hmm. you're right. We're one for one. <laughs> All right, <laughs> on to the next segment. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so what? How, how's this going to work, Brooksy? So we have five clues. We're gonna, I'm gonna, do you want me to read them, Andy, or do you want to? Uh, What do these guys want? You want to hear I, Brooks's I, I, voice? I want to hear Brooks's voice. You can All read right. the clues. All right, I'm going to read you five clues, one at a time, and you guys got to decide after each clue if you want to lock in who you <laughs> think it is. Are you trying to open your third yeah, eye over here, that's man? Right. That's right. I'm okay. getting into, into the astral plane. Give meditation. us the first clue, Brooks. Give us the first clue, Brooks. <laughs> All right, guys. Clue one. This is going real well. 
I am twenty seven point eight years old. Mm. Mm. Not, not 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 owl. Not Al Borland. No, he's so old. Uh, I'm twenty seven point eight years old. I'm not locking in an answer just yet. Yeah. But that's helpful. Thank that's, you. It's a pretty ambiguous clue. Okay. Go on, Brooks. <laughs> All right. Clue two. I have finished as a top twenty fantasy running back in three of six seasons. Twenty seven point eight years old. And okay. what's that clue again? A top 20 fantasy running back in three of six seasons. Three of six, huh? Okay. Top 20 fantasy RB in three of six. Six total? I mean, I need... I need yes, sir. Okay. 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 Consecutive? Uh, like six years in a row, or are we just cherry picking I'm six gonna, years of a career? I'm, I'm I don't gonna know. If, I'm going to say that it's six years in a row. Okay. Confident. That he played six in a row, but three that he's of... He's been the, in the league six years. Okay. Yes, gotcha. that, is, that gotcha. is correct. I see what you're saying, Mike. I'm just like, yeah, we're like 2014, 17, 19. We're just skipping years. Brooke, right. Brooks is a, is a sneaky snub. No, that's a stupid question, Mike. All right, go on, Brooks. <laughs> All right, clue three. I have at least 34 receptions in five straight seasons. How many? 34 receptions in, in five, a, straight, five, five straight seasons. Straight. Three five. of six years. Okay, mm. we, we need a moment because we may want to yeah, lock we're... in. I've got before the fourth clue. Now, those of you at home play along. We're not revealing quite yet. Maybe you already have a guess. That was a tough one because I had a guess. Uh, it, I'll, I, I was go 20, ahead. Yeah, twenty-seven. This is not my answer. I was I was thinking Nick Chubb. He's he's been good. That's he's, where, Yeah, I was. He's been about that. that. He's about that age. But uh, the receiving work that uh, there's that, no way Nick Chubb. No, no, no. Say. It's not. No. It's not Nick Chubb. All right, next. All right, clue four. I had eight total touchdowns last year after having 18 in 2021. Oh. Okay. 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 I think I, I think I, oh, I'll put my answer down. Yeah, I'm got. I don't I got, like it. I've got mine locked in. I don't in. like it. <laughs> I got mine locked in too. I regret it immediately. You lock it in, Jason? Sure. <laughs> Are you embarrassed if you don't? Yeah. Uh, Are you getting peer pressured into? Yeah, I'll, I'll be peer pressured into locking in my answer. All right. You ready for the fifth clue? Yeah. All right. I am a cancer survivor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Yeah. okay. Changing my answer. Yeah. So I've got it right. Connor. James yes. Connor. Connor. James, James Connor. What was yours, Mike? What were, your, what were you locking in pre-cancer survivor? I mean, don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> was it Aaron it, Jones? It was uh it was Leonard Fournette. Oh, okay. Mm, okay, eighteen yeah. touchdowns. Mine was James Conner for oh. sure. Uh <laughs> yeah, it wasn't uh it, it was not. It certainly It was Dalvin Cook. I saw you write it down. It, it was Dalvin James Cook. Yes. Oh. Right. So just to like bring something to the forefront here after our amazing game where we were super good at guessing. Yeah. Uh James Conner. Top 20, three of six years, 34 receptions, still scored eight times last year. We knew that was going to be uh, a regression, right? Like we talked about that. James Conner wasn't going to score 18 more times. Was very dominant towards the end of the season. Um, do you have any strong feelings about James Conner in yes, the upcoming year? I do. I think he is an extremely good value right now where he's going. I don't see James Conner as... A superstar. Obviously, no one is expecting the Arizona Cardinals to have some great offense this coming season. We don't know the health of Kyler Murray, yada, 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 different coaching staff. But as the roster stands, he's the dude. He's the only guy there. And obviously, after the NFL draft, maybe things change. Maybe they draft uh, a, a, you know, a, a preeminent running back. But I doubt it considering the holes that the Arizona Cardinals have and the money that they've invested in James Conner. Should he go into the season just – in the same situation as far as the running backs on the roster, he's being drafted right now in best ball in the like RB twenty nine. Yeah, I mean it's he's left so what for round dead. What round is that? I want to say he's in the like seventh, eighth round. I okay. mean you're talking almost past the RB dead. So he's he is completely an afterthought. And this is a guy who is you know there's how how many how many running backs in the league are the bell cow for their team not many F less than my fingers that's for sure <laughs> so, yeah, which is 10 which is 10 it's okay. standing at 10 okay. yeah um <laughs> my my point is i i think he is being undervalued he's a good uh draft pick right now and 
you know, the 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 situation for him I think only gets better if Kyler ends up coming back from his injury quicker. The sentiment around the Cardinals is so negative. Yeah. I mean, they're what, plus 2,500 to win the division. Um, it, it's definitely going to be reflected in ADPs, I think, in general. I don't think you're going to have a lot of excitement. around. Like, Hopkins is probably going to get traded, or maybe he already has by this time. Sure. And, um, you know, does Hollywood Brown, does his ADP rise appropriately if, if there's doubt around Kyler? Yeah, and for James Conner, it's it's very tough because we you know we we talk about it on the show. Players who are on winning teams, they produce more fantasy points. It kind of it's one of those things that makes sense. If if they're a winning team, they're scoring more points. If they're scoring more NFL points, they're scoring more fantasy points. But James Conner was incredible after he came back from his injury. He was a stud, and he was playing on a losing team. I mean, you had. Let's see the the final five weeks of the season. All I, I'll, I'll go final six, I should say, final six games that he actually played, all losses, and yet was a top fifteen running back in all of them. From week nine on, he was the running back five. He's he's right. actually really good at football. He's a a big gigantic running back that can score touchdowns and catch the ball. But he's he, he will be twenty eight in the NFL season, and if he's going. If he if he stays in that range, that seventh eighth round range, I can be interested in that because now we've we've moved past the dead zone, which in in the running back dead zone, that's where you're really wanting to scoop up high powered wide receivers because, and you're not you're not uh, reaching, you're not overreaching for a running back because you feel like you just got to get one on the team. You're, and then in those the the rounds a little bit after that though, that's kind of when you're like. Do I take a chance on one of these rookies who I'm not sure what their upside is? But So it, it will come down to a draft day value. He just has that profile of a running back who could immediately vanish off of the, the face of fantasy football. Yeah, I, I definitely get it. But if you're not investing a lot, the risk-reward might be there. Yeah, um, that's what I'm, I'm kind of surprised he's going there. He seemed to me like a guy who might have been one of those late fourth or fifth round uh, running backs because the people, you know, getting real nervous of, oh, I don't have a running back. I don't have a running back. I got to get one. So that would bump him up. But if he stays late, okay. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and move on. I want to play a game. Well, the producers have taken over and they like games. And so we're going to play them. And today Brooks has something brand new that he, I mean, he didn't even ask us if he could put this in the show, which no, pretty rude. Uh, you know, he's, he's kind of getting big in his britches yeah. and uh, doing what he wants. So Brooksy, now that you're the, uh, one of our under 40 producers, um, what are we doing today? All right, guys, this game is called gut feelings and here's how it's going to go. I'm going to read a player name and their current average draft position from best ball drafts. Okay. After I tell you that name in ADP, you guys will have about 10 seconds to write down a single word to describe how you feel about that player. Okay. Ooh, and then do we, do we get an a emotional chance? show? Yeah. 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 And so we've got some special music drops to play while you're writing down <laughs> those, mm. those uh, words. Yeah. And like a professional podcast Excellent. oh yeah and, and so, then do we get to expound on our our feelings on yes you, and these words you must you have to yeah, okay so. and is 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 niche off the table for jason or yeah as probably, a word to yeah okay. probably should yeah be. keep yeah. it clean jason probably yeah. should be so yeah i'll i'll read the the <laughs> name and the adp and i'll say your 10 seconds starts now and then we'll talk about it okay and then you reveal and talk about it i so. think i understand the parameters of this game you guys ready for the first player is this a game or is this a like a Therapy session. Yeah, this is more of an exercise to help us work through some things. Like, yeah. I mean, it's a little of every. I think it's a sentiment check, right? We want to, yeah. all right. Uh, you know, just see where we're at. Let's go. All right. Your first player is T. Higgins, and his best ball ADP is the late second round as the wide receiver 12. Your 10 seconds starts now. <laughs> One word? Oh, no. One word? One word. One word. Oh, okay. I want no, no. I want more of that. That music mm. is great. Give me that. No, you'll get it in the second round. That is like 
That is some vintage 70s game show music. I've got my word. I got my word. Jason, do you not have your word? You're still writing. He's learning how to spell it. Yep. (laughs) He's rewriting it for... for Did you have to look how to spell something? I would never. (laughs) Who's going first, Brooks? Who do you want to share their word? For T. Higgins, and you said it's second round, right? Yeah, late second. Late second. Yeah, go ahead, Andy. Here's my word. Do you want to go ahead and read? Hold on. Let me see if I can hold it up to the camera. (laughs) Maybe. My word is maybe. Maybe are you it's... Carly Ray Jepsen over mm. here? My actually, word? how about all three of you show what you wrote at the same time, then you can talk about it. Okay. Jason, what do you got? What's your word? I've got bridesmaid. Oh, very good. Very good. Stud. Oh, stud. Mike went with stud. Um, all right, I'll start. My, maybe comes from factoring in the worth and the value at that late second round, where it's like, I know T. Higgins is a very good player. I know Jamar Chase is a better player. I think that he might be worth that pick. I mean, <laughs> that's what maybe means to me is that T Higgins might be worth that pick. I, I do think fluctuation is going to exist for T Higgins at a greater amount than it does for Jamar Chase. And you know me, maybe it's yeah. the best you've ever gotten from me drafting a, a wide receiver too. Jason's word is bridesmaid. Yeah. He's, so there's a reason. He's a wonderful bridesmaid. I draft He'll brides, never, bro. He, he will never be the bride while Jamar Chase is there. I believe he's the second best wide receiver two in the NFL. And for fantasy purposes. Is that behind Waddle? No, that was behind Devon Smith. Um, Ooh. So take a, take a third Ooh. place, Waddle. Um, I, uh, you know. His value, I think, is secure. You know what you're going to get. He's going to be a high, high end wide receiver two or a low, low end wide receiver one. But what he's not going to be is an absolute league winner. He is a player that you, when you're constructing your roster, you're saying, I want to, I want a secure spot. I'm going to plug him in here as, you know, just, I know who my wide receiver two is. I'm going to get some points. Uh, pretty consistently and and go from there. But, you know, in best ball, this is best ball ADP you're talking about. I don't think he's going to have many 30-point weeks or win you weeks. He is a bridesmaid. There will be plenty of wide receiver ones drafted after T. Higgins in drafts at that draft position for their teams. For sure. Yeah. And okay. so that okay. I only make that point because, you know, he's a very good – he's a great player. I'll even go that far, but wide receiver seventeen last year, wide receiver twenty two the year before. So are your that's my maybe, Mike. You say stud, yes, but does stud mean you think he can reach a new level, fantasy finish wise, than he did last year? So last year he finished with seventy four receptions, just over a thousand yards, and seven touchdowns. And he's he's a player that you have you you can't just look at the 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 final year finish because if you look at it, you're like. Okay, he hit those numbers. He played in 16 games, but you have to have followed along the story and remember exactly what happened to T. Higgins. Week one, he got knocked out after 26% of the snaps. Week five, he played 16% of the snaps. Week 14, he played 1% of the snaps. That's where we all – that was the really unfortunate Mm -hmm. one where we – you knew he was injured, but then they said he's going to play, and then he did not play. So that was – I mean, that's a – it is a part of the story that – you had those really unfortunate fantasy burns. But when you look at the game log and you account for those, like essentially our our games he did not play, he was an absolute monster. I mean, just... You're accounting for all the games Chase missed? Not necessarily. I'm just, I'm looking at his, at his uh, game lines right now, but that's, that's part of the upside for T Higgins is he, he is somebody that can come through and give you, 150 yards and a score, even when Jamar Chase is on the field. And there's there's, there's wide receiver ones technically. They're the one for their team. But not every wide receiver one in the NFL can hit 150 and one or 150 and two and, and win a whole week. Yeah, when I, when I said he was consistent, you know what you're going to get from him. That speaks to what you're bringing up. There were only five times last year where he was outside the top 36 wide receivers, which – five times might sound like a big number. That's a that's a very good number for a right. wide receiver. Wide receivers are very inconsistent. Five times he was outside of the top 36. All three of those games that you mentioned where he basically didn't play, you know, 26% yeah. of snaps or fewer, where he was knocked out, those three are in those five. 
So you yeah, so have two to, bad games. I- exactly. Two bad games where he played the the full allotment of snaps. And so I, I do think he's uh, a, he's glue. He is a very nice pick to help your roster be strong and stay together. Um, but he is not uh, the diamond that's going to take you over the top. Yeah, he's not Jamar Chase. And it's when you're – we know that very frequently two wide receivers will finish in the top 12. That happens. And – while I, I mean, I'm not going to argue against Devontae Smith, T. Higgins, who's a better wide receiver. That that doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is Joe Burrow's passing production versus Jalen Hurts' passing production. One of those players uh, can hit the like the 5,000 yard threshold and 35 plus touchdowns. Jalen Hurts is fantastic, but that's not what he's going to do for the Philadelphia Eagles. Where that is what Joe Burrow can and probably will do yeah for the record I you know I I do think Devon Smith is a better wide receiver I would never draft Devon Smith over T Higgins gotcha. in these offenses T Higgins would be um uh, who who would you rather have in this year's draft uh getting Waddle in there T Higgins or Waddle as the that's fantasy a, most relevant wide receiver too that is a I like Waddle that's a fair question I think they're pretty close feels like Waddle's upside is higher yeah I mean he he did finish higher last year he's got more explosive plays what if I told you T Higgins is in a contract here Jason oh <laughs> greedy humans <laughs> there were yeah I think you got higher end with Waddle I think we saw that last year hey, Higgins didn't have a lot of top 15 games he's consistent mm-hmm. like that would have been another word that I think describes him well um but yeah to each their own and how they're constructing their roster I wish I could get him for less that's all you know I what wish I, that wish? I could Understand. fix that roster with that consistent piece for a lower price. That's I all. I hear you. You know what I wish? What do you wish? I wish for more of that sweet music. Yeah. Give us another name, Brooksy. All right, guys. The second player is George Kittle with a best ball ADP in the fourth round as the tight end four. Your 10 seconds starts now. <laughs> Wait, this <laughs> I can't think with the music on. That's different music. We got, oh, oh yeah, man. we've got five I didn't different drops. We got down. five different. Inter- give it to us one more time. Oh, yeah, we yeah, were yeah, listening yeah. to the song. Yes. Yeah, all right. Mm, give me that horn. Oh, I okay. I don't know how to. Fr- <laughs> oh, you Mike guys go. still can't get it down to one word. What's your no. word, Jason? What's yeah. your word? My word. Oh wow. Is Fake. Fake? Fake. Ooh. He's a faker. <laughs> what? That's that's some... What? Yeah. Uh, here's what I think about George Kittle. He's an I am- think we know. <laughs> he is an amazing talent, and he could be Travis Kelsey. He could be the best tight end in the league, but he will never be the best tight end unless opportunity requires him to be. Right now, Travis Kelsey, I mean, look at the opportunity, right? Like, th- they got rid of... Terry Kill, they have a hodgepodge of wide receiver three NFL level options, and then he takes over. Kittle, in any game, if the game plan was we are going to have Kittle beat you, Kittle's going to beat you. But for fantasy purposes, it's it's fake. It, it, you look back at the last three years and you go, man, he's amazing. So many big games. And almost, almost, is is not 100%. But it, we're talking 90% of those games are when another wide receiver was missing in action, and he basically is thrust into the position of being a high-end target. So I think his his value as, an, as a high-end tight end, he can do it, but only in the situation where he is forced to do it. My word is sometimes with three exclamation points. Whoa, you're, you're shouting that. I'm saying and underlined. I'm saying uh, I guess I did underline it. Yeah, I'm saying sometimes because he is worthy of three exclamation points sometimes. It's really a <laughs> shame because he could be a weekly stud. Like yeah. there's there's uh, you know outside of him missing games with injury, there's, there's no physical inability there. No. It's just game planning and and it, it sometimes happens, right? With with coaches that um you know know how to diagnose a defense, know how to prioritize. I mean, they didn't Christian McCaffrey changes a lot of the story. Mm-hmm. If Christian McCaffrey's not there and you got the same end of season with Kittle, 
you know, you're looking at it like this guy is going to be more regularly the centerpiece of the game plan. Yeah, I mean, but it, Debo should be the centerpiece, it, and so should McCaffrey, and so should Ayuk, Ayuk and, and and maybe Trey Lance's running game if he's the starter. So sometimes hey, Kittle, if you're listening, I just want to make sure you know this is fantasy fake. Yes, okay. not real life. Like you are the dude. He is amazing, but for fantasy purposes, he's a fake high end tight end. And my word is overproduced. Uh, he finished with eleven touchdowns, and. To that point of his career, which his his high in touchdowns, which was 2021, six, six touchdowns, and going through, you know, his game log, trying to re remember exactly what happened. So, the beginning of the, you know, he missed a couple games through weeks weeks three through twelve. He scored four total touchdowns. That's not a lot for someone who should be a dominant fantasy tight end in the league. And then Brock Purdy takes over. Fellas, do you remember how George Kittle was the one who was the loudest of like, well, it should be Brock Purdy's job. He's he's the starter moving forward. Uh, do you think that has anything to do with the fact that in the final four weeks of the season, he scored seven touchdowns with Brock Purdy? Now, help me remember those final four weeks. How many of those did Debo Samuel play? Oh, that is a question I don't know the answer to. I do. It was one. Oh, that was a trap. Yeah, it was a trap. <laughs> but my point is, it was De Debo's gone, so it's like, Kittle, you're up. You're awesome. Yeah, I mean, I think the word fake was pretty mean. I yeah. am a mean but, spirited uh, man. But I, I, understand the, I understand what you mean, because that's, that's representative of his fantasy reality for teams, not the player. You so, know he's a great player. and um, So, best ball, are you... Willing to take him where he, in the fourth round. I have not yet drafted him where he's going, but one of the nice things is for fantasy, you can, you know, at the at the very least for DFS, it's pretty predictable, right? Like if if you know that Debo's gone or Ayuk's gone, Kittle has the talent, and if he's given the opportunity, he'll produce. I thought somebody might go with the easy, brittle word um, because of the injury history. Well, that's yeah. mean. Yeah. Yeah, I would never. Uh, let's take a quick break and come back with more music. <laughs> All right, we are going to come back here with another player name. And I look, I, so far I wish there were 15 seconds of music, not 10 seconds. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. But um, what's the name, Brooksy? All right, guys. Justin Herbert, best ball ADP, also the fourth round as oh, the quarterback man. seven. Oh, this one's Your easy. Your 10 seconds starts now. Oh, yeah. I want to thank the Academy. Do you need <laughs> another 10 seconds? No, no, no. I'm good. I mean, I'm uh, good. I'm formulating over here. Oh, boy. I'm formulating over here. Oh, yeah, yeah. baby. Forgot Mike's 40 now. Takes him a little longer. Okay. I have changed my word thanks to that music. My word is tantalizing. Mm, okay. My word is single? single, but I'm saying that as in. Is he like ready to he mingle? He is ready to mingle, baby. Oh, oh He's God. back on the market. Oh, my gosh. Mike, what's your word? Pocket. Mm, okay. I, okay. See where, I see where you're going. Yeah. And I'm using that as a dirty word for fantasy football. Because it, it, it caps him in your he mind. Is, he is a pocket passer. And that's how you end up going from the quarterback to he's he is a franchise quarterback. He is a great player. And but that's, how you describe Joe Burrow? Uh, yeah, okay. it is. But okay. I think that that Joe Burrow, the system that Joe Burrow is in, and the players that he is surrounded by, it's a far better situation than what Justin Herbert has himself in currently, as of the time of this recording. Okay, but that's how you go from quarterback two of 5,000 yards, 38 touchdowns, down to quarterback 11 at 4,700 yards and 25 passing touchdowns. It's tantalizing for me because you know that you could be grabbing the 40-touchdown season, the 45 touchdowns. He's got that ceiling, so those players, when they drop, because they tend to ping-pong between bad and good seasons, Matthew Stafford was one that's done that before, they're tantalizing to me. They're tempting because it's great when it's great. Yeah, and, and it it will be great this coming season. Uh, the the Chargers have restructured. Said that before. 
I, we we brought up this last year the 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 pocket passing mentality where if he doesn't have the passing touchdowns it's going to go very poorly. You just don't have a baseline with these guys that aren't running. Two, when you're drafting someone as like the quarterback three last year, I that's, believe. That's the problem. Two top five finishes. And where it is has he plummeted? Oh, in, yeah. In ADP? Yeah, I think he's the well, – I, mean, I want to say he's the quarterback seven or so. Okay. Yeah, like, yeah, seven. Like Brooks that's, just that's said. What, that's what I'm I mean, saying. Like, what's the word for not listen. being invincible? I mean, the pocket passers aren't invincible like running quarterbacks. So right. Vincible. Vincible, yeah. yes, he's very vincible. Um, because it, look, I mean, th there are excuses: injury, Keenan Williams injury, Guyton injury. You know, there are reasons, but right. that makes him it not invincible, or as Jason would say, vincible. Yeah, I, look, my the word that I should have written down in hindsight would be Lombardi, because he's going to lift one he's this gonna year. Super Bowl, champ? he's going to lift one this year because he got rid of one this year. Joe Lombardi oh, my was gosh. Joe Lombardi was a problem for the Chargers. Kellen Moore coming in, I am yeah. really excited. The fact that we we're very confident now that Keenan Allen, Mike Williams are going to be there. I think they will probably draft another wide receiver. This coaching staff looks awesome. He's obviously talented, and the fact that he's not the quarterback three, but he's the quarterback seven. I think I think he's probably the best. They draft day value right now at the quarterback oh, I, position i like it when you talk dirty like that um the the chargers did restructure keenan allen and mike williams's contract so i think we should assume those guys are there they're going to be uh focal points of the offense ready to rumble all right give us another name all right guys the fourth player is jerry judy with the best ball adp in the fifth round as the wide receiver 23 your 10 seconds three. starts now. Ooh. I can't think what this is. Fellas, <laughs> I'm just uh, – <laughs> I go into the groove. You can't handle writing during the music. Look, I – You're going to have to cut it out of Mike's ears while he's – I'm a musician. And I, I go to a different place when that is playing. Well, let's bring you back to that place. Why don't let's we? Let's go. Yeah. Jerry Judy. He's that dude. He yeah, that's, that's a poop. <laughs> yeah, that's a poop. I that's realized. a problem because it's a poop. <laughs> I realized it as I was making the rhyme. He's a duty. <laughs> All right. That uh, was, but it was a dash Y. You've got nothing written down, do you? Dude, mind your business. <laughs> oh, man. You guys, what are you talking about over there? I'm curious your word, Jason. Well, me and Jason will do this segment, Mike. <laughs> yeah, don't yeah, worry yeah, about yeah, it. Please. Don't worry about it. All right, here's our words here. Jason, what is yours? Duty. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Look at my word. How? Can you read it? Yeah, yours says ready. Yours says that you are ready for the breakout. Uh, obviously, when he was drafted. Uh, I mean, I, I loved Jerry Judy's college film. His route running, his production, he looked to me like an Doesn't absolutely sound like the explosive Mr. player. Well, that was many, many years ago where he has not yet ever lived up to expectation. Last season, I think he impressed me. Obviously, the unfortunate injury, which cost him a, a chunk of time, the unfortunate downgrade at quarterback going to Russell Wilson, and... <laughs> You know, it was, a, it was a very difficult season, but he still looked good at the end of the year. For me, the reason I, I wrote duty is mostly a joke because um, it rhymes with Judy. Yeah, and and we had just talked about that being a poop. But um, do you want do you want another my, word? Well, my original word was fit because I feel like I'm throwing a fit that I'm saying I I no no I'm not gonna do it. I don't want to be in on the Broncos. Like I. I yes, don't want do. I <laughs> see this is why I'm yes, saying this. Do. I'm saying this because I know I do. That's why my word is Peyton. And, and and so my fit is related to Peyton. I don't want to be hoodwinked. I don't want to believe I think Peyton is a great coach. I really do. I think the Broncos are going to have a great bright future after they cut Russell Wilson following this coming season. I I'm not going to be in on chasing after the hope in Sean Payton in 2024. What's his ADP right now in best ball? 24, 23? Yeah, 23. I, I think ready. I think I'm ready to be – if you want to convince me to be in on somebody in that 
in that Denver system. It's Jerry Judy's at the tippy top of my list. Sure. Of, of value. Yeah, and I know it's only a five. The, the end of the season when the offense changed a little bit, that's when you saw Judy healthy, number one in week 14, number three in week 18, 1,500-plus yard pace. I know it's a small sample right there, but I do think – I think it's going to be a very clear separation of Jerry, Judy, and the rest of the receivers on this team moving forward. So, ready. I think yeah. he's ready. Over the final five weeks, which was when, you know, like Denver kind of did some okay things over those final weeks. That's where Jerry, Judy was playing fantastic. He was putting up 90 yards a game. The touchdowns were kind of fluky because he had three in one game. But, but 90 yards a game – that, that that's a sustainable thing for him. I mean, uh, not ninety, but I, I'm, I'm so saying it's not sustainable. Yeah, I, I I I overspoke, but I'm saying I'm more on Andy's side of. I think Jerry Judy's going to be an extremely interesting player this year. All right, he, he will he will certainly be very 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 interesting. I think there's going to be a lot of fantasy managers who are 100 percent in. He's coming into the season as the one. Last year it seemed like Cortland Sutton was the one, right? And now we know better. But the reality is Tim Patrick's the one. Tim Patrick's very good. Tim Patrick has to recover from an injury, though. He should be. His timeline, he had, he had, he has plenty of time. Well, I need, I need you boys to steal yourself because we will not, we will not let Kyle the Borgogian defeat us mm -mm. as we play a game of liar liar. Liar, liar, pants on fire. And so this is, uh, we're borrowing from the uh, heralded Spitballers podcast. Award winning. Here. Award winning. Um, Kyle has prepared three rounds of Liar, Liar, and this is uh, essentially two truths and a lie. And I'm going to read these truths to you. And we have to use our, dare I say, I don't know, doctorate level skills to determine the lie. I you have do. read the first statement, and boys, we are in trouble. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, two truths and a lie. I'm going to read all three, and we determine what we're going to lock in. Um, fact number one for, for, for the first round. Since he entered the league in 2020, the aforementioned Jerry Judy has never caught a touchdown while his team was in the lead. Mm. Okay. <laughs> These are the things I always track in the back of my mind. How would we know that? Uh, number two, as a rookie, George Pickens had as many 20-plus yard receptions as Garrett Wilson, Drake, London, and Chris Olave combined? No way. No that way. That seems like a lie. But I know he had a large uh, yards per catch. I, I also know that Kyle loves doing these combined things where yeah. he finds people that like had none. He's, he's a sneaky snook, that one. And then the third fact here, including the playoffs and preseason, Tom Brady has thrown 783 passing touchdowns in his career. He has had a passing touchdown from every single distance on the NFL field, 70 yards or less. Come on. So that would be impossible. seventy a seventy yard touchdown, a sixty nine yard touchdown, a sixty eight, sixty seven, <laughs> all the way down to one yard touchdowns. Wow. So sounds plausible. He did play over a hundred years in the NFL. So you're telling me Brady never got it, it's so seventies the longest he'd ever had? I, well, am I just, reading no, 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 not He's saying that that's the beginning of where that, that stat comes from, where okay. it's like okay, from okay, seventy okay. all the way down. Okay. That's true. Probably means he doesn't have a 71 yard or yard right. touchdown. Gotcha. Okay. I know which one I'm locking in. I think the Jerry Judy stat is true. The Broncos have not won a lot of games with. Uh, is it true? Gosh <laughs> dang it! I was cert I was going with George Pickens for sure, so I'll lock it in. I yeah. think the George Pickens one's a lie. I don't. You know, I know Olave it slowed down towards the end of the year. Drake London probably didn't have a lot of 20 yard receptions. Garrett Wilson had a couple. Uh, I do think that George Pickens did not surpass all three. Yeah, that's the one I'm going to lock in as a lie as well. This certainly seems like a very obvious one that Kyle would find. It would be easy to grab this data. You just look for people that are surprising. He's lazy, you're right. He's lazy. So I'm going to lock this in, and either it is the lie or Kyle is lazy. Okay. So I win uh, either a, way. A, B, yeah. Okay, so game theory-wise – Fellas, because I I think that the Judy one is true, but game do do I come in with you guys? Do we? We've do, already got two in. Do we risk it? Yeah, but but if we all get it right, 
the odds of us winning I don't think the you game. go we don't need to go game theory. Just get the right answer. Yeah, just get the right answer. Also remember how lazy Kyle is. Right. What are you going with, Mike? George Pickens. Oh. All right, as the lie. All right, so we're all going that direction. Let's throw over to Deucer's Alley. Let's just catch him in his lie. The lie is Tom Brady. Oh, you lazy, <laughs> lazy man. <laughs> we're so lazy looking now, up is that there, stat. Is there a seed of truth in there? Uh, Brady's missing 61, 67, 68, and 70. Did you, he, did you do this all yourself? You went and looked? Uh, you can find it pretty quick. Oh, gosh. All right, I didn't even want to get that one right. All right, round two. Quarterback oddities. But hold on. So we're saying George Pickens had, has as many. So had, let me guess. Wilson, he's got about eight, I'm guessing. Pickens had 16 of 20 oh plus my gosh. air yards. Wow. So, yeah. That's a lot. That's pretty much all he caught. I'm guessing like, he had 16 receptions on the year. <laughs> right. <sighs> all right. Man, we suck. All right. Round two, Jalen Hurts' total rushing yards since he entered the league is exactly the walking distance from the footballer studio <laughs> To the Pickle Palace, oh, which is our pickleball. This is a ridiculous, <laughs> ridiculous one. If that is true, it's our pickleball you have, facility. Kyle, if you have, for the second time, mapped out exact walking distances from our studio to match other important things, then I will retract your lazy comment. 1,898 yards away. So picture that. Picture... Um, what is that? Uh, almost 19 football fields. If you lined them up, 19 football fields, it seems plausible. Like, that's the distance to... Is this as the crow flies? <laughs> yeah, this is as the crow flies. I assume, right? Sure. Why not? <laughs> you don't oh. even know what that means, do you? <laughs> I said exact walking distance. Okay. All right. So maybe it's not as the crow flies. Yeah, this is Google Maps. But that makes it more likely to me because okay. that's a lot of football fields. Okay. All right. Totally... Everyone listening, in, unable to perceive whether that's true. Daniel Jones has never thrown a touchdown in a city west of Dallas, Texas, in his professional or collegiate career. These are ridiculous. Well, he hasn't thrown many touchdowns, to be fair. I know I put a tweet out saying that I, I thought the deal was bad for Daniel Jones and the Giants. I noticed. Oh, my goodness, there are a lot of people that live in New York because there are people that were like, what are you talking This is the greatest quarterback of all time. No, he's not. Um, I, how many passing touchdowns does he have this last year? Like 15? 15. 15. 15. Give him dude, $40 million a year. I give him a lot of credit for earning had, that money. He had seven rushing touchdowns as well. Sure. 22. Okay. Sorry. But, that, sorry that's how I talk about 22 yeah. touchdown quarterback. But you, 22. Can't, you can't throw a touchdown west of Dallas when you run them in, Mike. So, man, west of Dallas. So you're talking... Never throwing a touchdown to you know, Cardinals. I mean, Never there's throwing not a, them to. There's not uh, a ton of against stadiums. Against the Broncos, right? Chargers, Rams, Seattle, Raiders. I mean, these are teams that he's not going to be playing very much. That's. I think that one could be true. Okay. All right. The third fact, including playoff games, Justin Herbert has thrown fourteen thousand three hundred twenty-six passing yards in his NFL career. That is the. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is the same exact number of days that producer Al Borland. <laughs> has lived on this planet as of this recording. These are no just, way. These are unnecessary trivia questions. <laughs> these, <laughs> that is the best way to put it. Wait, that's okay. That's the lie. That is the lie because he, he, here's why. Kyle <laughs> wants to have these like the exact same distance numbers, but he's already done this with distance from our studio before. So all he has to do is – is look up, okay, how far is it to this, and then find a number that matches. To find a number that matches to the exact number of days that 40 old years. No, he just go. He, he finds the days first, and then he just goes finds the player. No, nah, that's 100% Justin Herbert's lie. Okay, I'm going to lock in the – these are all stupid. Can I <laughs> can I say that? I lock that in. I lock in the stupidity of these questions. Um, I'm gonna lock in Daniel Jones as the lie. Herbert. It is. Uh, it is Herbert. Yeah, but it's it got to be close. It actually is close. Yeah. It's like within 200 days. Yeah. No. The 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 <laughs> chances Stupid of man. you being that lucky to have his exact yardage being the exact amount of days. Jeremy's but there has been to alive. be there has to be somebody that has the exact amount of passing yards as the days he's been alive. I don't believe that. It's just probably like Fran Tarkenton or something. Yeah, I tried. I didn't want to get too cute, so. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. no, you yeah. definitely didn't get too cute with you those. Know, you know what that sounds like? 
lazy. <laughs> All right, third round. Uh, on February 6, 2015, when Jason made his first appearance on the Fantasy Footballers podcast, the first player he brought up on the air was Fred Jackson, also known as the depth chart assassin. Oh, that man. sounds pretty so these are, realistic. Oh, no. These are all me. <laughs> apparently, the round three is all Jason related. So oh, that's fun. Fact number two, excluding last year's Halloween Hagrid, <laughs> Hagrid setup, Jason Moore wore a black or gray shirt on the Fantasy Footballers podcast in 2022 more times than Tyreek Hill was targeted. That's un... I mean, he was targeted a lot. How many targets? 150? 160? I'll give it to you. He had 170 targets. Oh, brother. I mean, that's about as many shows as we do, I would guess. I don't even think you need gray included here. Do, how often do I not have a black shirt on? What do you call it today? That's a black shirt. Yeah, yeah. that's a black right. shirt. Um, and then the last one in 2022, <laughs> Jason Moore. Oh, my gosh. I hate you, Jason Kyle. Moore. <laughs> Jason Moore said the phrase <laughs> in 2022. Jason Moore said the phrase. The reality is more times than the number of receptions Devontae Adams had. <laughs> okay, that's the lie. That's the. I know it I say it a lot. Be. I know I say it a lot. But if I say it more than the amount of targets, Cal, give me the target. No, 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 number. receptions. Or receptions. Oh, yeah. Are you, does oh. that change your opinion? Oh, that does. So, uh, reception total is? He had 100. You. Yeah, I'm, I'm a, that. He's not lazy. Oh, man. He's, he's not lazy no. if he looked that up. That's right. That's right, Andy. If he looked that up, he's not lazy. I know he is lazy. Okay. So, it's the lie. <laughs> I am going to say that your black and gray shirt one's the lie. I don't think we put out that many episodes. That's where I am as well. I was trying to do the, the quick I think 150, 160, not 170. Yeah, that's the something. lie. That's and he's willing like. to just take a win on a small yeah. discrepancy. So, uh, Kyle, what is the – oh, did, did you lock in? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. I locked in the – the the, the reality. reality is that he's a liar. What's the reality here? One, Jason's a liar. Oh, uh, no! It's the black and gray shirt. Jason only wore it 162 times. Of 171 episodes he was on. 162 wow. episodes? What were my other colors? These you, stats are amazing. Problem. I'm going like navy blue. He wore navy eight times. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Kyle, he's built out the spreadsheet. Okay, Kyle. What were, what were you, the other three? You are not a lazy man. Or were the other two? He, he had Hagrid and then black or gray. Oh, so Hagrid, eight navy. Black or gray, 62 times. 162 times, yeah. 162. And then what's the, – is there any left? No, that's it. That's oh! It. No, yeah. no light colors for the whole year. Not with boobs like this. <laughs> <laughs> you got to make sure you cover them up. Dark colors only. Oh, man. Oh, these stats. These stats are out. I mean, Kyle. So you said reality is more than 100 times. Kyle. Amazing work today. Amazing work. <laughs> and I love you. Uh, do we have any more music drops from oh. the uh, from the game show era that we want to close this show out with? Oh, yeah. Oh, spectacular. That's how you do it. And the reality is we'll be back <laughs> with a free agency show that you do not yeah. want to miss. Hopefully you enjoyed today's show. I'm going to have to work on that. <laughs> we paid Kyle to look up those stats, too. An incredible job by well, all the producers Money today. well spent. <laughs> we'll talk to you very soon. Thank you for listening. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers. Ballers.